Hey guys, welcome to Badass Reviews Pick Up The Remote and today I'm here to review the streaming series The Witcher. It is currently streaming on Netflix and uh, basically the whole season is there for you to stream, you can binge it and um, so I will be going through a lot of spoilers in this review and so if you've not watched it, maybe watch it and then come back later. So before I move on into my review itself, a small disclaimer here, um, I've not, uh, I'm not really uh, familiar with the original source material um, not read, I've neither read the short stories or the collected novels uh, I've also not played the video game so I'm basically going into this um, you know with fresh eyes um, I am however a um, high adult fantasy um, a fan I'm a fan of that genre so I think that uh, from what I've heard about the feature some of the trailers that I've seen and also you know certain clips that I've seen of the video game itself uh, I may uh, really like this kind of uh, uh, series so and plus I needed a you know a small a kind of replacement I wouldn't say a replacement but uh, something to get me back into after the end of Game of Thrones which was the last kind of uh, high adult fantasy series that we had <clears throat> so with that aside um, let's move on into the review itself and so there are three main characters the series um, takes about yeah there's eight, eight episodes and it takes us on a journey um, through three characters and the main uh, advertised as the main character by the mind in all three characters at the same amount of uh, time uh, on screen and you know uh, but Henry Cavill he plays the main character uh, the titular character here, right? uh, it is the Witcher, and his name is Gerald of Rivia. And basically, I think Henry Cavill is very plays a very stoic uh, character, and he does this really well, in my opinion. <coughs> and uh, you know, his acting is pretty good for the material he's been given. Uh, but where he's where he really shines is in the action sequences. Now, no doubt. Um, most of the dangerous action sequences must might have been played by a stunt actor. Um, a lot of the close-up shots, you could see uh, Henry Cavill's face, and so I think he probably did a lot of the um, sword fighting um, as well as the um, hand-to-hand fights himself, uh, leaving the more dangerous ones to probably the stunt actor. <coughs> and. Um, you know, based on what you see throughout the season, you can see that uh, Cavill has put on a lot of uh, work in his training for sword fighting, and uh, and uh, those scenes are uh, really great. Um, and then, uh, like I said, his action scenes are much better than his um, you know dialogue delivery or something like that. Uh, because I don't know, in my opinion, that was what was uh, really interested um, me about. Um, the Witcher himself. Uh, the second character here, uh, Jennifer Wengenberg. Now she's played by a newcomer, uh, Anya Chalotra, and in my opinion, she's the revelation of the series uh, because you know I think that uh, the character itself, uh, somebody who you know who's tormented uh, and has to overcome a lot of both physical disabilities and other things. To becoming, uh, you know, in her growth, into becoming one of the most powerful majors in that uh, picture universe. So I think that uh, her acting was great. You know, uh, you could really believe a lot of her scenes. Um, and uh, um, in my in my opinion, she is my favorite character of the show. Um, then the third character um, is Cyrilla, and she's played by another newcomer, uh, Freya Allen. And uh, well, I think she handles her debut role um, as Cyrilla very aptly as well. Uh, you know, I was kind of put off by her the storyline of her escape, uh, but I think that uh, her journey itself into uh, when she realizes what her true abilities are um, towards the end of the season was really good, I think. Moving on to the rest of the characters, um, Joey Beatty, he plays Jaskier, who is the bard, um, 
and he follows uh, Gerald on his adventures and basically he sings songs and I think he provides all the laughs in the show. He was also one of my favorite uh, supporting characters. Um, but I'm most curious about two other characters actually. Uh, none other than the Black Knight, uh, Chahir and also the mage, the two mages, uh, Wilkerfort and Fringilla. Now those, uh, those three characters I felt were the most interesting uh, to me. I would like to know more about their background. <clears throat> of course, Fringilla, we got a bit of her background when she was a, a fellow student or trainee um, with Yennefer. But I would like to see more into her, what happened to her during the interlacting period before you know, she really joins the main storyline kind of. <clears throat> and um, you know, I do think that um, that these three characters will have a lot more to do in the second season and I'm hoping to see more of them. Um, initially the timeline shift uh, you know, was confusing at first uh, before it quickly came very clear to me what was happening halfway through maybe episode 2 or the beginning of episode 3 and I realized ah, these three things are happening at all different times. I'm sure the uh, fans of the game and the novels uh, you know, would have seen that earlier itself um, and um, I think that's one of the cons for casual fans I suppose um, that a lot of them may be put off at first but you know who knows so some of them may be patient enough to watch throughout through um, it's basically they are all 49 to 55 minute episodes or so I think there was one episode that was like over an hour probably the finale um, Netflix has basically spared no uh, expense with their, you know, magnificent set designs. I thought their set designs were great and, uh, you know, both the interior as well as the exterior. And I do think that the visual and practical effects for the features, uh, you know, they were all top-notch and made it very believable to me. Um, um, especially, I think, the uh, Striga being the, one of the most frightening char uh, characters that I've seen. And also it was, you know, really memorable for the kinds of things that it, uh, it could do, she could do. <clears throat> in my, uh, in, in, from my, from what I've just seen of this first season, I think this is a fantasy that's really deeply rooted in Eastern European folklore. So, you know, uh, their tradition, traditional fairy tales, kind of, they basically combine a lot of um, horror elements into it and it's, uh, you know, it's really apparent in the, sto the initial storyline with the ones of the week kind of thing and it is rated 18 plus of course so it is uh, not your obviously muted PG stuff so do expect a lot of gore um, some nudity and all that but the gore parts I thought were great uh, nothing seemed out of uh, sorts to me uh, and I was assuming that if it's similar in the video game I don't think it's a big deal it also really never falters on the uh, excellent musical score here um, and by two composers uh, by the name of uh, Sonia Belusinova and also Giona Ostinelli. Uh, both, they, both of them have uh, done a remar remarkable job, I think, in the uh, background score. Uh, you know, it really heightened a lot of um, places and a lot of the action sequences music were great as well. Um, and I think they did a pretty good job. I'm not sure if they have uh, if first or if they've done any before this, uh, but nevertheless, I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> and um, another pro of this um, uh, of this series, I think, it's that uh, you know it focuses it focuses really less on the grandiose CGI battle stuff, instead um, going very up close and um, uh, being more localized. It's you, you, you see a lot of practical hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, sword fights and I think, um, uh, you know, they are both, uh, in my opinion, due to the type of sword fights we see, they are all, um, you know, they are brilliantly bloody and also beautifully choreographed and it reminds me a lot of, uh, I don't know, of pretty, I think about, I can't remember how long ago, a series called um, Spartacus, which was on Stars and <clears throat> Uh, the use of magic is also another thing that was very um, interesting about the series as a whole because um, it's been some time since uh, magic has been used in this way. 
and I think uh, I thought that a lot of the you know, scenes where there was magic involved were great, fantastically shot as well. Uh, so kudos to the cinematography team as well, I think. Um, and um, apart from that, you know, I, in my opinion, I don't know if uh, you know if if the series on a whole would garner a lot of solid critical p uh, praise, but from the initial reviews that I've read. I think it seems to be, you know, the oft, oft heard about impasse between critics and fans. The critics kind of poo pooed it, liked some of some aspects of it, but not all. Uh, while the fans seem to be positively inclined to liking the series as a whole, <clears throat> I think I do think that um, the series does have a big uh, task of. Uh, a, you know, having to please several different fan bases, as I mentioned, you know, those who love the novels and also fans of the games, we have to do all of that somehow at once. And, um, you know, I do, uh, especially those who play the games, I think they would expect uh, expect a lot of, um, you know, monster and witcher scenes compared to what was already shown. Perhaps we can expect, expect that in Season 2. Um, I do think that the show, you know, it manages to thread the needle really well. Uh, it has a lot of elements that I think is probably from the novel, in terms of the storyline, the dialogues and all that. And obviously a lot of the uh, scenes involving the monsters and the, uh, you know, character, the other um, less savory characters are probably, you know, uh, have um, some roots in the game. <coughs> I do think that uh, Lauren Schmidt, uh, is rich. she has a, uh, you know, she and her team, um, I do think that they really need to take on a lot of, uh, some of the criticism, I guess, um, of the overuse of genre tropes and, uh, you know, some of the regurgitative expositions as well as, I would say, some mediocre dialogue here and there. Um, if the team, the whole team, uh, Lauren Schur, the director, uh, Lauren Hishrich and, uh, and her team manages to take upon some of these criticisms and improve their show as a whole, I do think that uh, uh, season 2 could be much better in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, despite what I've said, I do find it, you know, uh, reluctantly entertaining, I know, because I binged about 5 episodes at a go and then watched the remaining 3 episodes the following day. So, uh, in my opinion, it did not make me want to continue watching the next episode and the next episode because of the intertwining, intertwining threat between uh, the three characters throughout all eight episodes. So, that really made me more interested to continue watching. Um, is this a Game of Thrones replacement? If you ask me, I don't think so. Um, because I do think that there are two different kinds of shows. Game of Thrones is more political intrigue and all that. This is very rooted in three characters and their journey. So I don't think a comparison is really fair. I do, you know, I, I don't think so. Um, but, uh, you know, the comparison will be inevitable, of course, but uh, I do think they are unfair. Um, and, you know, I do feel that it will stand, its, stand on its own in due time, given its space. And I do think that Netflix uh, trusts the whole thing behind it so we should be seeing a lot more better uh, scenes um, uh, sorry uh, better episodes in the future um, overall I would give uh, the Witcher series a very solid 3 out of 5 and uh, I do think that fans of this genre would enjoy this series so go out that go out and you know watch it on Netflix and uh, come back and then you know uh, leave your comments in the uh, so this has been a presentation of uh, Badass Reviews Pick Up That Remove. Like, share, comment, subscribe, do that thing. But most importantly, keep calm and rock on.